I'm Anil Kumar sharing with you a technique of sketching rational functions with oblique asymptotes. The equation here is to sketch graph of f of x equals 2 x cubed minus 2x square minus 5x plus 6 divided by x square plus 3x plus 2. In this particular video, we'll see how to find oblique asymptote and how to analyze the end behavior. Now you will observe that degree of numerator is 3, that of denominator is 2. So what we check here is that degree of numerator is greater than denominator by 1 and that means what for you? That means oblique asymptote, right? Correct. So let's find the equation of this oblique asymptote to begin with. There could be different approaches to solve such questions. So, but my concentration here is on the oblique asymptote. So we'll begin with that. So we have x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 6. We're going to divide this by the quadratic function x squared plus 3x plus 2. So it goes x times. You have to take three factors. So we get x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x. And when you take away, what do you get? When you take away, you get minus 5x squared and that becomes minus uh, minus 2 and this is 7, right? So minus 7x, bring down plus 6 here, okay? <clears throat> so now uh, we have to multiply by minus 5. So it becomes minus 5x squared. All terms will be negative, minus 15x minus 10 and you take it you're left with uh, so that becomes plus 15 so it becomes 8x and that becomes minus uh, that becomes plus 16 correct so that becomes the remainder for the given question now you could write this function f of x as quotient which is x minus 5 plus the remainder, which is 8x plus 16. So you can take 8 common, right? So I'm just taking 8 common here and writing this as x plus 2, saving one step, divided by the divisor, x squared plus 3x plus 2. Now, as you can see, x squared plus 3x plus 2 can also be factored, product of 2, sum of 3. So I'm saving some more space and writing this as x plus 2 times x plus 1. I hope that's clear, right? So x plus 2 times x plus 1 is actually factor of x squared plus 3x plus 2, which I wrote here. And I also factored the remainder, 8x plus 16, wrote it as 8x plus 2. And that is an interesting equation. You can see that x plus 2 is a common factor for both numerator and denominator. So that gives me a whole at x equals to minus 2. Is that okay? Now this equation gives you almost everything, right? <coughs> <coughs> so let us see what all we get from this equation. So we get three things from here. One, we get oblique asymptote y equals to x minus 5. That is the oblique asymptote. Then we get whole at x equals to minus 2 and we also get a vertical asymptote vertical asymptote at x equals to minus 1 do you see that so we get all the three things from this particular this particular equation that's that's the beauty of this equation so it really helped us a lot in finding the oblique asymptote now let me put all this information together uh, to sketch a rough graph. Okay, so since all these things are on the minus side, keep more space here. Okay. So that's the axis, correct? 
So oblique asymptote is y goes to x minus 5. So I could sketch kind of here uh, y goes to x minus 5. Is it okay? Oblique asymptote. So this value should be minus 5. Is okay? Now we have vertical asymptote at x equals to minus 1. So that can be uh, a vertical asymptote. So Okay, so this becomes at minus 1. <coughs> now, let's try to analyze the end behavior. So, so at this stage, we got all these asymptotes. Let me write down here, asymptotes. And so these are two asymptotes. That's the whole at x equals to minus 2. You can obviously uh, substitute the value here and find the y value of all. We could do this now. So let's write f of minus 2 is what? In this equation, right? So we get minus 2 minus 5 plus 8 over minus 2 minus 1, uh, plus 1, correct? Okay? So minus 2 minus 5 is minus 7. This gives us, let me write down. So it is minus 7 and this gives us... Uh, minus 8 so we get minus 15 that means uh, that means that uh, at minus 2 we'll have somewhere here a hole at minus 15 is it okay so we have a hole here so so I'm just sketching it like this let me let me okay so that represents the hole so we the coordinates for hole are minus 2 minus 15 not a bad idea okay <clears throat> let's try to analyze end behavior so now what we will do is we'll analyze end behavior that is when x approaches when x approaches negative infinity what happens so when x is approaching this side negative infinity a large negative value you can see from the equation f of x equals to x minus 5 <coughs> plus something right but if i put x as negative then this plus portion becomes negative 8 over a negative quantity so just put for example 100 minus this is a negative quantity so we are taking away something from the line so we are approaching uh, the line in this direction do you see that so we are approaching from below so that is what it is so it is below the line do you see that <clears throat> so y is approaching from below we'll write but when x is approaching positive infinity then this portion is positive right so y is approaching from above that is to say that we are approaching from this side is it okay this side we never touch it but we are approaching from this side so that's the behavior near your oblique asymptote got it now let's try to find behavior near vertical asymptote so, so now let's analyze vertical asymptote which is x equals to minus 1 now here if x approaches minus 1 from the left side from the left side what happens okay so are we looking into negative infinity value or positive infinity value? That is what we're looking into. So if I write here a value which is minus 1.1. So if you could write minus 1.1 in this expression, you will get a negative value. So you are approaching, so y is approaching negative infinity, correct? So that is to say you are approaching kind of like this fine how about when you approach x of minus 1 from the positive side that is you could substitute minus 0 0.9 that will keep this positive so y approaches positive infinity is it okay so when you are approaching from that side you kind of mess this up you are approaching positive infinity so that becomes your graph near the vertical asymptote that's how we are approaching correct so if I have to draw this portion from the limited information we have, 
we could draw it like uh, connecting these points. Uh, so let me do that. Uh, we'll move on to the next page to further analyze and do the needful. Uh, so it, it's a hole here, right? So do you see this portion? So your graph will look like this. On the other hand, we can find the, the x and y intercepts to get the equation of the graph. So we'll do this portion finding x, y intercepts. So, so we'll do x intercept and y intercept. In the next page, so that we could sketch it, we are not very sure how the graph will be. It could be something like this, right? But we don't know what these points are. So to calculate these points, we'll go to the next page and uh, do some more calculations, finding x-intercept and y-intercept, okay? So let's move on. So let me first sketch what we have uh, already done. So what we analyzed here was something like this. So let me redraw uh, everything which we did. <coughs> starting with the equation the function is written like this and we could write this function as f of x equals to oblique asymptote plus 8 over x plus 1 and we know x is not equal to uh, minus 1 from here and the whole at minus 2 right so we also know the whole is at uh, <coughs> uh, whole is at uh, minus 2 minus 15 this is what we know right <coughs> okay uh, and we know that there are vertical asymptotes here plus we know that uh, since there is a hole Uh, let's draw the oblique asymptote also. So I'll just draw an oblique asymptote in a different ink. We'll have oblique asymptote. Oblique asymptote. We had actually drawn this portion from the behavior with a hole at... So let me draw like this. So there's a hole, right? This point here is at minus, minus 15, and here it is minus 2, correct? So that is the hole which we have already done. We know the end behavior that we are approaching from this side and the oblique asymptote from the other side, correct? All this we have already learned in initially. Now let's find the x and y intercepts, right? So y intercept is kind of simple. Uh, if I substitute 0, for the function I get what? I get 6 over 2 and that is 3. So y intercept is very clear it's somewhere here right so it's, let's say it's 3. Okay? So that becomes a y intercept. To find the x intercept we have to actually factor it completely right. So how do we find x intercepts? X intercept is not easy. At times you may have to just forget about finding X intercept. But in this particular case, since we know there are two factors we already know, one of them is uh, X plus 2, right? So that is, there's a factor X plus 2. Since we know this, it is easier to find the X intercept. So what I will do is, this time I'll do synthetic division. We know this is the factor at minus 2, it gives me 0, right? So let me do synthetic division this time. Earlier we did long division. So writing this equation, 1 minus 2 minus 5, 6, will divide by minus 2. Is it okay? Bringing 1 down, multiplying by minus 2, adding them up, minus 4, multiplying, minus, and minus becomes plus, adding them, we get plus 3, minus 2 times plus 3 is minus 6 and that gives me 0. Perfect. So that means this quadratic function is x square. So we have x square minus 4x plus 3. Correct. 
So x square minus 4x plus 3 could be written as x plus, I mean this is minus, so x minus 3 times x minus 1, correct? So I could also write this function f of x as in the factored form. So let me write down in factored form. Well, this could be our approach also. So I'm giving you this. Some, some of you could have done like this. We could start with factoring. So we get numerator as x plus 2 times x minus 3 times x minus 1 divided by, we factored this as x plus 2 times x plus 1. Is it okay? So kind of redoing what we did anyway. But this is important to find the x-intercepts. So you get whole and vertical asymptote. Everything from factoring, okay? So we have two zeros here, one at one, the other one at three. Do you see that? So let's say these are my points, right, somewhere. Now that helps us to sketch the graph. That helps us to sketch the graph. So what we'll do is I'll just draw a rough graph here going through y-intercept and then through the x-intercept and then kind of going and approaching the oblique asymptote. Do you see that? So that becomes the graph of our function. So this is, this is f of x. So with the help of x and y intercepts, as we have seen in this part of the video, we could fairly accurately draw the graph. Now the students who have done calculus, so the calculus students, they could find these points also by analyzing derivative of the function, right? So that portion many of my students haven't done so far, so I'm leaving it here. But those who have done calculus, they should go ahead, find the derivative of this function, and find local minimum and maximum to sketch more accurate graph. But I hope this gives you a good picture of sketching rational functions, both for my functions and calculus students. Feel free to write down your comments, share your views, and if you like, that'd be great. Uh, and if you like, that'd be great. Thanks a lot for watching. All the best.